Okay, in this video, I'm finally gonna share something that I've been planning for a while, and that is my custom cloud project for creating PRDs. And what is a PRD? A product requirements document. Product requirement document is a document containing all requirements for a certain product. It is written to allow people to understand what a product should do. And the way this works is a cloud project that uses custom instructions, that uses multiple MCP servers, and also uses the latest Cloud 3.7 thinking model. I think this will be incredibly useful for anyone that's trying to build anything, either with AI or with regular old humans. And just a quick background on me, I've been in tech for over 10 years. I was a founder, a product manager, a consultant. I worked in privacy, I worked in accessibility. I've also worked closely with startups from guiding them from ideation to launch on various products. I've been helping individuals and businesses integrate AI into their workflow. And right now I really think I'm at the peak version of my cloud project for creating PRDs. And I've been refining and working on this project. It keeps getting better. Once MCP servers became a thing, I added sequential thinking, Brave Search, Tavili, File System, and Fetch. And then last week, Claude released 3.7 thinking. I'm going to show you my latest iteration, my latest custom instructions. And what you'll get at the end of this process is a very well written PRD, a document that you can share with your designers, with your engineers, with other stakeholders in your company, or with Cursor, with Windsurf, any AI tool you're using to build anything. Because this document aligns everybody. It gives all the context needed to get started. So what will you need? Access to cloud projects. You'll need to have the following MCP servers installed, and I've done various tutorials on all of them. Sequential thinking, Brave Search, Tavili, Fetch, File System. And this setup is great for anyone who's trying to build with either AI tools like Cursor, with Windsurf, ChatGPT. And again, even if you're building anything with regular humans. Here's the thing, building anything, especially with AI, revolves entirely around context. But I'm not gonna sit here and tell you you're gonna be able to build anything with AI. There's a lot of hype and get rich quick to all that. I'm just gonna show you how I do it and give you the tools so you'll be able to go on and build things by yourself. And the PRD is a living document. It's both qualitative and quantitative. And it evolves as more insights become available. It clarifies what you're building, why you're building it, who it's for, initial thoughts on technology and platforms, user stories, pain points, and the overall solution. What PRDs don't usually contain are the how. How we're gonna build a product. It's more about what and why. And making sure that everybody's aligned and understands those things before you go forward and write a single line of code. That comes later. The way I look at it is just like asking clarifying questions. You wanna to get to the why. You wanna understand everything, so then you can get a more holistic understanding of what you're trying to build. So then when you try and go out and build something, you're able to do it in a systematic, iterative manner without going all over the place. Oh, I want to add this feature. Now that I think about it, I want to add this feature. That might work, but is it efficient? Is it scalable? Will it drive AI or humans crazy? Yes. So what I did was take my experience as a product manager, broke it down into a cloud project. And if you follow my channel, you know I love cloud projects. And what I do with cloud projects is I build a different cloud project for every task I'm doing. So this is a PRD creator, which I've made multiple versions of. This is my latest one, PRD Creator 325, March 2025. I've iterated on it a lot. It's gotten a lot better with MCP servers and with Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. And the way this works essentially is you just start talking to Cloud. You give it an idea. You talk about it, about the product or the feature you want to build. We're actually going to do this with vibing, with using Mac Whisper right now to just verbally dump everything. And it will make our process even faster. And I made a different video on vibing or using AI dictation, it's gonna be very useful here as well. And what happens is basically you start telling Cloud what you wanna build, Cloud will ask you clarifying questions in a systematic manner to help you iron out what you're trying to build. And at the end of it, you'll come out with a PRD. And this PRD essentially acts as a single source of the truth so that you and your real life human team or your AI companion will be able to look back at this and understand what you're trying to do Remember what the context is. Remember everything that needs to be considered when building the next feature or next line of code. So just to show you how this works, we're gonna to put together a PRD. And what I'll give it is my Chrome extension for creating a YouTube playlist without paying for YouTube Premium. So first of all, we're in the PRD creator, Cloud Project. Here's the custom instructions. I give it a role and identity. I give it its conversational approach. I give it a question framework, the type of questions to ask. And every question pretty much builds on the previous question based on the context you give it. And I have it start broad and then filter down with specifics. I give it examples of how I want to ask questions. Then I tell it how to use tools. Now, this is the one thing that I'm still tinkering with with Cloud 3.7 is it doesn't call the MCP servers all the time. Even when I tell it explicitly to do it in the custom instructions, 
So I give instructions on how to use them, but I do find that sometimes you have to nudge it. You have to say, use sequential thinking, use Brave Search, use Civility, use whatever you have, just to kind of remind it. Now, as you see here, I have 69 MCP tools available, noise. The ones I think you should have are Brave Search, File System, Tavili, Sequential Thinking, and Fetch. I've done several videos on how to install these MCP servers. Okay, so now let's just trigger Mac Whisper. I wanna create a Chrome extension that helps me save videos, be it YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter videos, to a list inside my Google Chrome or any Chromium browser. So I don't have multiple tabs open that take up memory and I don't pay for YouTube premium. So the idea of this of this extension is to save all these videos in a manner that I could just click into it and watch it like a playlist. And I expect this to work across various browsers. I could log in with my Google account and I plan on building this with cursor. Okay, so we just did a verbal dump of what I wanted to do here using Mac Whisper. So let's just press go and see what happens. And keep in mind, it's thinking now, it's using Cloud 3.7 thinking, and then it will also use all these MCP tools. So, so let's see what happens. I thought for four seconds. Hi there, I'm excited to help you plan out your Chrome extension for saving videos across different platforms. I'll ask you a series of questions to understand your vision better, then I'll create a comprehensive PRD that you can use as a blueprint for development. Let's start with a few fundamental questions about your video saver extension. So clarifying questions. Beyond YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, are there any other video platforms you'd like your extension to support? What specific information about each video would you want to save? How do you envision the user adding videos to their list? For example, would there be a button that appears when watching a video or a right-click context menu option or some other method? Would you like the extension to offer any organization features like folders, tags, categories for the saved videos? So again, we're gonna use Mac Whisper just to answer this. I'm just gonna rapid fire one, two, three, four. I think for now we can just stick with YouTube for a minimal viable product, and then we can move forward to Vimeo and Twitter. Two, I think we should save the URL, the title, the thumbnail, and the duration. Now, I don't want to pay for the YouTube API or any APIs right now if we don't have to. So I'd like you to look into a way of doing this without signing up for API access. Number three, I envision the user right-clicking the video and, and hitting a context menu button saying add to playlist. And for now, I don't think we need to deal with any folders, tags, or categories for saved videos. This is a great idea for a future feature. So I just dictated my answers back a lot faster than typing. And now let's just press enter and see what happens. Okay, so we have more questions. This gives me a clear picture of what you're aiming for with your video saver extension. Let me ask a few more targeted questions to further refine the concept. So you know what, I'm just gonna answer it as we go. I would like to open the original YouTube page when the saved video is clicked. Next question. Eventually, I'd like the extension to sync my videos across devices using my Google account, but for the first version, we can do local storage. Regarding the context menu, I'd like it to appear when clicking a YouTube video, either as a thumbnail or in the video itself. And only then would it be able to be added to the watch list, to the playlist. For specific UI preferences for a proof of concept, let's just do a vertical list. And I imagine it having thumbnail, the title, the duration, and maybe also a numbered list. So we know what number on the list it is. Regarding preferences on how the video should be stored or ordered in that list, I think chronologically as added, the newest one first. And as you see here, what it's essentially doing is asking me all these questions that when I first had my idea, I didn't, didn't necessarily come to my mind. But if you plan all these things out ahead of time, you're gonna have a much better time when you go out and build it. Instead of just thinking, oh wait, I should add this. Okay, so now it's getting to technical. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and answer these questions. You can pause the video and see what the questions are. I just don't wanna to take too much of your time. Yes, I'm co very comfortable with the extension using content scripts. If it's difficult to obtain the video duration without the API, then we can skip it for this version. Regarding the tech stack, I myself am not a developer. I will be building this with the help of AI. So I'm not sure the best tech stack for building this. So you can do the research using Brave or Tavili or Sequential Thinking to figure out the best framework for building this. Regarding additional features, I think it's a good idea to have the ability to remove a video from the playlist as well as a way to mark videos as watched. Regarding visual design, I just want it to be clean and modern looking. I don't want it to be too colorful. I like dark mode. As you saw there, I had to kind of push it to use sequential thinking and Brave Search. And that's the one thing with Cloud 3.7. It doesn't always call the MCP servers as much as 3.5 did. So sometimes you have to nudge it, but that's fine. First, I need to analyze the requirements for this Chrome extension, parse YouTube, store videos, implement a context menu, support removing videos and making them as watched. So, it's already taking all the information we've given it, more sequential thinking, brave search sequential thinking, and of course it's using its built-in 
Claude 3.7 extended thinking. Now let me consider the technical architecture of this extension. And because it used Brave Search, it saw Chrome now requires the newer manifest, which has different APIs and security modules compared to V2. Okay, thanks for the additional information. Based on our discussion and the technical analysis I've just completed, I now have a clear picture of your Chrome extension. Let me create a comprehensive PRD for your YouTube video playlist saver. I'll now generate a PRD that outlines the functionality, architecture, implementation details of your extension. And what I had it do is save it automatically to the file system as well. So we see it here, writing files to file system. The PRD covers all aspects of your extension, including app overview and objective, target audience, core features, technical stack, data model, UI design principles, development phases, potential challenges, future expansion, technical implementation notes. This approach provides a good balance of simplicity and structure that will be suitable for development with cursor and AI assistant. So now I just opened up my PRD, project name, YouTube video saver, project description, and Chrome extension that allows users to save YouTube videos to a personal playlist without requiring multiple open tabs or premium subscription. The extension enables users to save videos while browsing YouTube, view their collection and clean interface, and manage their watching status. Love it. Primary users, YouTube viewers who regularly save videos for later viewing, users who want to organize their YouTube watching experience, people who want to reduce their browser tab clutter, users who don't have YouTube premium but want playlist functionality. Then user stories. As a user, I want to save YouTube videos while browsing so I can watch them later without keeping multiple tabs open. As a user, I want to quickly access my saved videos in a simple list format. This is great. Core functionality, video saving, playlist viewing, playlist management, user interface, and each one has its design principles, its main views, and its acceptance criteria. This is looking good. Tech stack recommendations. Then it does a conceptual data model. Video object structure, cool. Storage schema, data operations, by design principles, talks about the layout, talks about the color scheme, security consideration, development phases and milestones. This is big. It pretty much breaks everything down into steps. And while this isn't a technical breakdown of how to actually build this, it breaks it down into development phases and milestones. And obviously you should iterate on this, but I think it comes out pretty good. Potential challenges and solutions, future expansion possibilities. I told it about some features I wanted to do in the future. Then it has technical implementation notes. And then it also has links on how to get all these documents. It is so powerful. So what happens now is you can either iterate and improve this and go back and forth with Claude, because I do think it's important to iterate, not just take the first thing you get from it. Make sure it covers everything you want it to do. You may want to add different things. You may have a different ideas. It may have done something wrong. Once you have this done, what you can do is you can take this and put this into cursor. For example, what I usually do, I write a PRD and I open a new cursor project. I create a new directory documentation. And the first thing I put in is this PRD, whatever platform you're using to build, you now have a document that covers everything that you didn't think about right away. When you said I had this idea or I want to build this way, it helps you figure everything out. And maybe not everything, but it gets you 70% of the way there. So I will share my custom instructions and I get help link below. I'm going to share two different versions. I'm going to share the one I've been using for the last few months, which I think is really good. And this newer version, which I'm still iterating on, but I think it came out pretty damn good. I have to say that the minute I started implementing this with everything I built with AI and really became systematic and iterated and tried to think about all the edge cases and the technologies and features I didn't think about, and how had AI help me plan this out, I became much more efficient and I was able to ship or just use my product a lot faster. So I think this is enough to start building with AI. If you have any feedback, any questions, if you think I should change it and you want to work on it and iterate on it, feel free, write a comment below. I want you to be able to take this and build good things with it. So if you learned something or you found this video helpful, do me a favor and like the video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you for watching. Happy building and have a great day.